Hey guys, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Mars is here. What you been doing? So I just want to say before we get into this video, thank you everybody for your comments on my last video after our little <laughs> one year break. We had a bit of a hectic year in 2020 along with the rest of the world. So yeah, it's good to finally be back and I never was going to completely just <laughs> abandon <laughs> YouTube. Pretty much a heap of trips got cancelled for us in 2020. Just wasn't that much to film and I didn't just want to make up some random things to film. Harrop have sponsored this install so they've sent me out a e-locker. Please don't take it as just because this has a sponsored product included in this video that it's not genuine or that it's ingenuine. I will be honest with everything that I ever put on my car whether I paid full price for it or whether I didn't. That's just my own values and morals that I have as a human. It's absolutely incredible to be supported. However, if I'm not interested in a product, I just say no. And these videos never eventuate. And I have a <laughs> whole email inbox of companies that I've said no to because they're just products that I don't support, I'm not interested, I don't think they're up to the quality that should be on my car. So yeah, if it's on my car, I'm, I've, I've thought about it, trust me. <laughs> I wanted a Harrop e-locker for so long. I remember when I was researching lockers 10 years ago, it was between Detroit or Harrop and I read so much into things, you know, I was at the four wheel drive shows, I was looking at them on the stands going, one day I never wanted an air locker, nothing wrong with them, just not my cup of tea, I can easily fix wiring. But yeah, just personal preference for an e-locker. When I was looking at lockers 10 years ago, I <laughs> was a poor broke uni student so I could only afford the full drive systems locker, which I didn't expect to last as long as it has. It's been in there for about seven years now and it was $300 I got on sale. So it's been in the front of my car for that long, had absolutely zero issues with it. It works perfectly well. The only downside is you can't turn it off, which does make some tracks kind of boring. <laughs> because of the way the mechanical locker works, it means I can't put one in the rear. Not that I probably ever would because I would like to be able to turn off a rear locker. But yeah, mechanical locker in the rear, obviously you can't unlock your hubs in the rear. Putting one in the rear, you would just chew through bulk tires and just, yeah, no, not a good idea. would not <laughs> like to do that. The reason for a locker, I've never had obviously a rear locker. I have an LSD, it kind of works. <laughs> However, with the tray build, the canopy, and now towing the trailer, having a rear locker is something I kind of want. Having constant drive to the front is great. However, there's then, you know, a whole four other wheels that that locker is kind of dragging through everything. So to have another locker in the rear would assist in getting the trailer up and over things. There is a second diff that we got, same as mine, to pull the diff center out and we were gonna install the locker into that and then quickly like do a swapsies. However, I pulled it apart this afternoon and it's not looking the best. It is completely salvageable with a bit of a clean up. The, the gear set's definitely not. So we're gonna try and just do it on mine and just pull it out <laughs> and quickly rebuild it and chuck it back in because I'm gonna have to go to work next week. I'm not gonna film too much of the actual install. We're gonna kind of montage it, montage? Only for the fact that if you're installing a locker, it's recommended you do a full rebuild. I'm putting in a solid pinion spacer. So the reason I'm probably gonna not film as much of the install is because I recommend that if you're doing this and you don't know what you're doing, to take it to somebody who does. You shouldn't really be winging it. Taking it to a professional diff rebuilder or you are doing it alongside somebody who is very experienced, which is what I'm gonna be doing because I haven't actually rebuilt a diff since trade school. So <laughs> it's not something we do. In my old videos, I used to kind of reiterate that it wasn't a tutorial because if I put a whole civil hub rebuild or a whole diff rebuild, it would go forever. So I can't include all the steps that are necessary to complete the job. A lot of people watching my videos, they're copying them and they're missing very key points, which is not something that I want to <laughs> continue to do. None of my videos have ever been a tutorial. You should be following your owner's repair manual. We are currently on a lockdown in Townsville at the moment. So that is why I have the ability to film this. And then later on, I'll be able to get out after the lockdown and film 
some actual tracks. Hopefully gonna be able to get camping this weekend as well and we'll have the trailer so might need it for them, don't know. <laughs> so yeah, we'll get into it. I've got a million emails that I haven't read Gotta break that weekend that I gotta check But I don't mind it Cause I got her riding on that shotgun side With that take me to the sunrise Look inside her eyes Now we're flying Yeah, we're flying We got 10 miles of open road Trunk I see in the rear view mirror looking back at me. No, I don't hide it. Cause she's dancing, singing out to every song, and she's always got all of the lyrics wrong, but she don't mind it. No, she's still shining. of open road okay so that was me pulling the diff center out and now i'm going to dismantle the diff center so as you can see i have an lsd the other diff i pulled apart was an open center diff harrop also sent out a full rebuild kit so all new bearings and races but you push me away Here I'm just measuring the preload that's already set on the pinion just for a bit of curiosity. There is a correct tool for this that kind of looks like a dial gauge on a torque meter. Removing the pinion seal. To remove the pinion bearing we actually cut the cage off and this is what was behind all the rollers in the bearings. A little bit interesting that the bearing looked completely fine from the outside but yeah it just goes to show you never know what's underneath. Used a bearing separator and the press to remove the pinion bearing. Here I'm just cooking up some lunch for us. No nah, jokes. I'm just heating up the ring gear so that it's easier to install later on. As you can see it slots straight on. No hitting or banging required. And now just bolting in all the bolts for the ring gear. I loctited them as well. If I had to go back and do this again, I most likely would get a new ring gear and new pinion. Just make it a lot easier. Luckily my workshop manual has all the required specs for everything. Here I'm just checking the pinion bearing preload. The new bearing setting equates to about 11 to 17 inch pound. I also put a smear of grease on all the bearings just to accommodate for that period of run-in just before the oil starts circulating around the diff. That is the Terrain Tamar solid pinion spacer. It comes with three shim. Sorry guys, this is where my camera did die. So the pinion is back in. We ended up using a different combination of factory Toyota shims and now just torquing everything back down. Drilled a hole through the diff housing for the wiring to run through from the locker. Again, I missed a lot of the recording for this section, but it pretty much involved pulling the diff apart multiple times to get the backlash right and to get the shims correct, as well as the mesh pattern. This is the moment I realized there was actually still a gasket on the housing, which was incredibly difficult to get off and looked very factory. Filling it up with Penrite oil, of course, and Dunskis.
it is the next day and I'm going to do the wiring. And I just wanted to show you guys this wiring loom because it is the most high quality wiring loom that has come with something that I've ever seen. And it's quite impressive. It's got a lockout switch so you can't accidentally turn it on. It comes with everything. Ends have got these little packets. You can cut to length and the terminal's there to go. Relay. It's got your diode in there, all waterproofed. Wiring's all high quality. And everything's heat shrinked. That's where it comes out of the diff and then I've run it up my breather and it goes into the back of my cab. Mind the dinted cab. <laughs> this is the locker switch and this is the lockout tab. You can't accidentally press it until you press this across and then you can press it down. I can't express enough how incredibly happy I was with the wiring loom that came with the Harrop e-locker. I've installed so many lights and accessories on my own car, let alone for other people. So to see a good quality wiring loom like that, I've just never, I've just never, just never seen one. Well, I have, but they are very expensive. So to have something like that in a kit is insane. Good quality components, finished off well. I like good wiring, it makes me happy. I'm sitting in my car because I'm on a busy road and it's very loud. It is a week after installing the Harrop e-locker. So we've gone on one camping trip. We went to Big Bend, which is just north of Charters Towers. I didn't get any footage of me driving. Megan did. So I'll put their link to their channel so you can go and check it out. I'm just really bad. Like I don't want to get out of the car, stop and make somebody film me forward driving. Like, I just want a forward drive. It doesn't look that bad <laughs> in this clip, but it had a big soft sand run up. And then the hill itself had really, really fine sand, kind of like water. And then there was some rutted rock steps that I didn't really want to hit at full sand. I stopped about halfway and I was able to just take off in first low a lot easier than I have in the past in very similar situations. That was the locker and I was very impressed. been out to Big Bend there's like a few little kind of rutted sections tight corners not hard at all just really easy basic for driving but having the lockers means that I don't have to <laughs> send it and possibly do damage whilst towing I did do a post on my Instagram I had a lot of people asking why e-locker over air locker personal preference for me I never really wanted to run airlines then I got airbags and it kind of cemented the idea that I don't really like airlines I read a lot about air lockers you know 10 years ago they have changed but the amount of people that I've heard servicing them or rebuilding them or something's leaking but each to their own I'm not saying that air leaks are like super common off-road I've had maybe two with my airbags easily rectified and and just something that I had to deal with a lot of people argue that the air locker is better because once it's engaged it's engaged the e-locker obviously has a disengagement period where direction of rotation changes and it unlocks and then locks this on my wheel is a quarter turn of my wheel this is something that i will not notice off-road if you were doing comp truck competitions where you had really intricate, you know, you couldn't have your tire one centimeter in a different direction because that was the defining factor of you getting up this hill climb. I would say hands down air locker. However, people who run comp trucks get transported to the track, they do the competition, they get transported home. For a daily driven touring setup car like mine, 
e-locker hands down the reliability simplicity of it it's very little things in it that can go wrong or need rebuilding or servicing or anything like that nice slow controlled four-wheel driving is my favorite type of four-wheel driving and i have absolutely no <laughs> concerns or worries about having that period of disengagement once i understood it and saw what it did and how it worked and what it resulted in at the wheel not an issue okay hey guys so i'm just editing this video and i thought i'd just pop in here because i have forgotten something the e-locker has to be engaged at stationary or under five kilometers if you don't know those points and you try to engage it under heavy load or you know going too fast you'll get a jerk motion as it tries to engage it's not made to be engaged at speed or under driveline bind or anything like that. For example, say you're going up a hill, you're stuck, everything's like sitting back on the gears and then you try and engage it and drive. Um, yeah, it'll be quite clunky. And a lot of people take that as a fault in the locker, which is not. I've always been taught to, you know, you engage a locker first, you wait for it to fully engage and then you do the track. Doing a track without a locker makes for good content. <laughs> And then you've got an option. I can put my other locker in, I can put my locker in and it drags content out and it makes it look a little bit more exciting, a little bit more thrilling. Where in real life situations, I don't, and I, I don't understand why. How <laughs> Mars, don't be growling. No, um, yeah, Mars, come here, up here. In a no, no, in a grumble bum. You leave it. You go lie down in your bed. So anyway, that, that's not a fault with the locker. That's not a design flaw or anything like that. It's just how they're made to be. And for me, it's a non-issue because I'm not going to do a track and then go, oh, now I'll try it with my locker. Just no, no. Anyway, so I thought I'd mention that and we'll just get back into the video now, shall we? Front locker for me, most people will notice a lot more and it's a lot easier to see the difference in a front locker. I'm more likely to lift front wheels, which is when I need the locker. I'll put a video again that Megan shared where you can see where my front wheels come off the ground because I've got all the weight in the rear. The locker keeps it going so it's really easy noticeable to see a front locker working a rear locker more me feeling it working I can feel when i have more drive pulling the trailer up as opposed to kind of sketchy grabbing not really traction so it's a hard thing for me to try and film hoping to continue to review this as we go along Alrighty guys, so I think that's it. Let me know if you have any more questions down below in the comments. I'll try and get back to everyone. Whichever locker you guys decide to go with, a locker is the biggest difference, biggest noticeable difference that I had off-roading. And having the Harrop where I can turn it on and off is gonna be pretty exciting because I've never been able to do that before. I've always just had to do a track and get through it. Oh no, the horror. What are you doing, Papa? Oh, if you enjoyed this video please let me know leave a comment down below i'd really appreciate that i was absolutely blown away by all the comments in my last video so thank you very much i will see you in my next video